Alright guys, welcome back to Merlock's Den. This video is going to be a little bit of a another educational video. Pretty much this one's about weaponry. What some of the companies are, some homemade weapons, what you can and can't do with them, and what I personally prefer, and same with Isaac. Um, as well as a look at the style of different companies. So, let's get this done. <laughs> Alright. Pretty much, we'll start off with companies. There are quite a lot of companies out there and even some new ones coming out that I've even recently, as of last night, gotten to know. Um, there are the two main heavy hitters which are Epic Armory and Calamissal. Yeah, uh, another company that does real quality work is Alte and Nemesis. They've actually got a few Pretty much they've made prop weapons for movies like Lord of the Rings and a few other um, feature films. Um, Kalamazoo is a Canadian based company. So pretty much it will be a little bit expensive on the shipping as we've experienced in the past. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, they do have a distribution centre I believe in Australia. so. Once, if they have it, have one here, you will get it quickly, which is also, which is good. If they don't have it here, then you're just going to have to wait. Yeah. <laughs> um, Epic Armory, they've got pretty much places everywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure their main headquarters is in Europe. I don't know what part of Europe. Um, but there are a lot of LARPs that they sponsor like our main LARP that we go to here is Odyssey they are sponsored under Epic Armory and pretty much the owner of Heroes Odyssey Andrew he does bring some weapons and even sometimes some armor to events for people to buy there so they don't have to pay for um, shipping not to mention also you can order through your whether it be your local Epic Armory company or a local distributor like the local LARPs here. Um, there are a lot more out there that do fancy stuff that are a lot more expensive. Yeah, I would say his nemesis kind of falls in that category, being rather expensive, very high quality but expensive. Um, Epic Armory can be on both ends of that. They do have their beginner stuff from back when we started um, I've actually still got a sword here from back when we started on. So you can see the difference of the quality of their stuff from when they started to now with their different ranges, even the um, new range they've got called the Hybrid Range, which they've upgraded the handles and paid a lot more attention on the quality of the foam that they put into their blades and everything. Um, and I think pretty much... Kalamazoo is on the midway in between there. They can it's, be expensive, but they can be... Yes, yeah. they, have, they have like a beginner's like Squire line, which is some cheaper options, but they also go into the hundreds of dollars range as well. Yeah. If you're lucky, you can find on their website refurbished weapons, which are ones that have been sent back, whether it be there was a bubble in the foam or whatever it was, there was some kind of um, fault in it that they fixed up and put it back out there on the market for whether it be a quarter of, um, like a quarter of the price off the retail price or even sometimes half the price off. So um, right now we will show you some of the difference between the company's weapons. Uh, right here, as I said, is actually the first, like one of the first range of Epic Armory weapons. This one is a pirate cutlass. It does have the basket hilt there to protect your hand. Which works surprisingly well. It does. For being flimsy and just a bit of foam that is covering your hand, it does hold up. Um, as you can see, this is an old blade, so it does have wear and tear. There are bubbles in the um, latex. One thing you do need to know about Epic Armory and even their old line is the way they make their blades 
it does take maintenance. You do have to buy this, um, what's it called? Like silicon spray? Yeah, yeah like liquid it latex spray. Pretty much softens up the latex and it doesn't, if you don't do that, it will dry up, it will crack. Um, as you can see, a few parts on here is cracking on the actual basket hilt. But besides that, back in the day, they did used to have their basic handles were like this, just rubber over the core with um, leather over that to give it the effect. Um, they still weren't bad swords. They were nice and flexible, but they would only break if you didn't hold back, if you just went full swinging, like you were going to kill someone. Yeah, so all in all, the initial Epic Armory Blades are a really good entry weapon, so if you're just starting LARP and you're trying to get a fairly cheap sword just to give it a go, that they're probably the go-to, would be the original they do uh, Epic Armory range. Yeah, they do still sell these, so um, they are on the cheaper end of their budget, so if you're just starting off and majority of the LARPs out there do have higher weapons. So, for your first few games, I would suggest use their higher weapons so you find out what kind of weapon you want. Um, what company is... Because, don't get me wrong, the reason why I bring up companies again is every company's weapon weighs different. So these, for being the basic ones, are really light and very fun, but also at the same time really... Being really light, they're easy to get out of control swinging too hard. Um, and as you go up their range, the more they put into it, the more heavier they are. Um, like this for example, this is from their Epic Armories hybrid range. As you can see, can see immediately, compared to the handles, the hybrid range does have a more sophisticated rubber handle. So, pretty much, it does add a little bit more weight to it. And even the blade is, once again, it is still the same kind of blade where you do need to give it maintenance every now and then. It will crack if you don't. But pretty much the basic way that I'm going to explain this of how they put these blades together are pretty much they get three, three pieces of foam. The middle part will have a little ch channel cut out in it for the actual core of it to slide into. And they just press it together and glue it together and then paste over it with latex to give it this finish. Once again, they are very flexible, so you don't have to worry about these snapping across someone. Yeah, as you can see, even just with the artistic style of it, it's quite the evolution from the cutlass, like the, the paint colouring is much better, the blades have a nicer textured look to them, so they look closer to being like a real sword. They Which even have nice. the logo on the cross guard as well. So as you can see there. If you can see that. <laughs> um, oh no, yeah, these are the this line is a quality sword, so I would recommend grabbing one. Yeah. They are on the medium side. This one retails for roughly about I think it's like 140. Yeah, something like that. AUD, because we're in Australia. Yeah, Australian dollars, roughly about 140. Um, I know that's how much I paid for this one. <laughs> so, um, I do actually have here a blank handle, which is, it's not what Epic Armory, Calvisil, or any of them use. This is actually from a line called um, Wicked Replicas. There is a reason we don't use these, this company in LARPs. Mainly because, one, the core, instead of them being circular, they are more diamond shaped. So the sharp edges hit harder and do more damage to the person. So, um, not to mention the foam is more dense and it's a harder hit. It's like getting hit with wood instead of soft foam. Um, this, on the other hand, is actually a project I've got going which is I'm going to be making my own custom sword so I use the handle off one of them 
Um, it is the same as all the other handles that we have here. They are rubber, so they're all nice and plot, nice and flexible and everything. Even the cross guards, you're not going to break them off very easily. But at the same time, there's a lot of detail in these, and it is pretty hard. So, yeah. Next up, we'll look at some Calamisal blades. Right here, are a couple of demonstrations. We do have a short sword. And yes, that is pretty much like Sting's cross guard there. Um, and a dagger. And I'll let Isaac talk you through the Calamisal. Yeah, I also have, my personal favourite is my Bellator. From Calisol, it's a two-handed sword. I've had this one roughly three and a half years. It's, it's been interstate to week-long events. It's pretty much any LARP I've been to in the last three and a half years, I've been wailing on people with this thing. So it's starting to show its wear, but as someone who LARPs regularly, it's it's held up, worth every cent. They use a foam injection process to make the blades for these ones so they're very very sturdy they've got kevlar thrusting tips which for someone like me i i just adore stabbing people it's just i'm a stabby boy even the daggers have even certain daggers not every weapon on their site are stab proof majority of them the best way you can tell is they have the rounded tips instead of a sharp pointed tip so pretty much instead of like that you'll find them ra more rounded and more thick so pretty much all three of these weapons are stab approved because they have the rounded tips they've got the kevlar they've got the bend and the flex so yeah so as, as far as of all i've used like weapons from various companies i would say the calamus weapons are probably at least this line the kind of baseline are probably the sturdiest that I've personally used and they are not too expensive I believe when I bought this Bellator it was like roughly 180 190 or something like that but that's just kind of, that's kind of their entry range we also have a one-handed sword down there yep it's another one, I think these ones, this is the Squire range. Same style of foam. So same, same proof. Fo same foam injection mould. Yeah, but they're roughly 150 or yeah. something like that. We'll yeah. put up the proper prices yeah, proper to these prices, yeah. in the little wind it up underneath. And we'll show you a, we'll do a showcase of some of the different weapons, like visually. Because there's more than just swords, there's, as we're showing you. There's axes and maces, various daggers. Spears. Spears. We have a throwing weapon. Ah, that's right. Here. Ah. Right here is actually one of the Epic Armoury throwing weapons. A lot of people do call this a heart. I call it a rock because it personally looks like a rock. <laughs> um, they are very light. They don't have a core in them. Unlike the other weapons, these are made to be thrown at people. You will find lines of throwing knives, shurikens, all different types of things from even... We do, fondly enough, have a guy who has made some very eccentric throwing weapons at our LARP. He goes by the name of Murphy, or Smurf. Um, he actually made some throwing cupcakes to throw at people. So, uh, another, another good one we've seen from a friend of ours is some throwing shrunken heads. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that, they're very cool. I would have loved to get one of those for this. Um, pretty much they are, they are made out of the same foam that they make the swords, but since they don't have a core in them, they are more, pretty much, you can squish this up into a tennis ball. They are that soft. They will, if you cop someone in the face, they will still hurt. <laughs> um, but they're as soft as a giant sponge that you use on washing your car. So, yeah, throwing weapons do tend to work. Um, next up, we actually have a shield. 
as the shield user, Isaac will actually walk you through this one. Well, this specific shield is a Viking style. It is made by Epic Armory. So it has, it's made in a similar vein to the swords, except it's a lot thicker and a lot sturdier. They have a nice rubber handle in there. And they're, all in all, they're just, they're good shields. They're light, sturdy, and they're not too expensive either. I think these <laughs> yep. make a good sound too. So if you have a whole shield wall of people doing that, it can be pretty intimidating. Oh yeah, we've done that many occasions. Yeah, um, they retail for, I think, rough between 100 and 200. Depe depending, depending on the, on size, the size, they do come in all types of sizes. They come from roughly about dinner plate size to about this size. So yeah, so you have, can have all different types of like shapes of shields. You can get the Roman style scutum tower shields, which you, we have seen in action at. Um, there's a big LARP over in Canada called Bickling. There's a group there called the Auto Survey, also known as the Voyage North. They use tower shields that literally, I'm not joking, they go from probably about shoulder height to ankles. So about nearly a metre and a half long. Yes, they are. They are very impressive. You've also got the it's quintessential knight style heater shield. I own one of them. I was going to bring it, but unfortunately it's damaged at the moment. I've had it since before I started LARPing. I bought it at a medieval fair with a couple epic armory swords just to fight my brother with. But yeah, it's, it's seen, seen some damage. So I don't actually have it here <laughs> while I'm trying to get it repaired, but yeah. All right. Um, now we're actually going to talk about custom weapons. Um, as you saw in the last video with Stevie and even the one before that with the drone shots, our friend Adam, who was in the silver armor with the red, he had the big spike or pike. <laughs> Um, uh, yes, yeah, I had a glaive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was actually a custom weapon done by our friend Robin. Um, he does commission custom weapons. Yeah, under the name of Dark Wolf Designs, I believe. Yeah. Yes, they're, they're very good quality. The, for the LARP we go to Heroes Odyssey, all his weapons are approved for use there and they're designed with that rule set in mind. They so also they're... have been, most of his stuff is stab approved. So you do have to get your weapons approved before you go around stabbing people at LARPs. Yes, yeah, some swords, like we've seen earlier, the Calamisal swords, very good for stabbing. The initial Epic Armory swords, no. not so much. If you were to do a hard thrust, the core will actually can actually rip through the top of the sword. Which we have seen happen. <laughs> yep, which is not pleasant for the person on the receiving end of that. Yes. Um, he has, actually, I think one of my favourite weapons that I've seen Robin make was he made a giant, probably, I think, about two and a half metre, no, about two metre tall, giant war axe where one side was about... The size of my chest and it was a giant axe head and the other side was a giant size of my chest hammer head um adam actually got a lot of looks at looks from a lot of people down south when he took that to an event down at melbourne everyone kept on coming up to him and asking where he got that, where he got it from and can they use it and we'll, we'll see if we can find a picture of the beast and we'll it will post that up right up. about here if we can yeah um, but yeah, no, there are a lot of avenues you can take. I would recommend before you go out and use them, get them approved by your LARP organizer and get them checked instead of just going, Hey, I got a new weapon that I just made at home and possibly hurt someone or yourself. You no, know, with, yeah, with custom weapons, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that make good stuff. Like even man, you can order custom swords. Altair's nemesis, Altair's nemesis, like fully custom swords through them. You can, with K 
Calamese saw, you could decide, hey, I like this sword, this style of sword, but I want uh, maybe like a different coloured blade or a different style of blade, and you can get a custom sword made through them as well, going through a few different options, which are pretty cool. Which they actually do have on their webpage a sword builder. You can go on, change the colour of the blade. Hell, if you want an enchanted blade, you can pick a bloody blue blade if you want. Yeah, we have a friend of ours who has a very cool... Sword for uh, blue blade. Yeah. Uh, you probably would have seen that in the last um, in the video with the drone. He was the one in all red. That was he had the rapier for stabbing, and he yeah. had the blue blade on it. Yeah, it was a very cool custom sword. Also, no, his name is Bogdan. <laughs> Good, Good old Boggles. Boggles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> But I, I think we'll run through just a gallery now of different manufacturers, fa different Manufacturer. manufacturers, sorry, tongue tied, and yeah, just show you some of their work and maybe review, show you some of the prices of some of that work and let's cue some lovely weapon watching music. Yep. I hope you enjoyed the little weapon slideshow and the soft accompanying music. <laughs> <laughs> Please do remember every single like, every single comment and all that stuff. It really does help grow this channel and it really does help get us more out there. We do have some big news coming up in the near future. But yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Our next video in this segment will be on armour. We were originally hoping to do them together, <laughs> yeah. but the in Australia at the moment is the Abbey Medieval Festival, and I've lent pretty much all of my armour to some of my compatriots that do reenactment. Isaac so, and I do use armour that is actually able to be used at reenactment with steel weapons, so most of our stuff does get loaned out to those guys. Yeah, that's, that's my other hobby, is when I'm not hitting people with foam, I hit them with steel, because I'm a maniac. <laughs> but... Yeah, so when I get all of my gear back from that event, we'll do a video showcase on the different types of armour, which will be a lot of fun, and I hope you join us for that one. So until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and take it easy. Have a good one.